Is it time for you to move home after living abroad? Are you having a hard time with the thought that in just a few weeks you won't be living where you currently are? Are you looking for a way to really savor and enjoy your last few weeks in your expat country? Then today's video is definitely for you. Before we get into the video, be sure to go below and hit that red subscribe button. I have set a goal for myself to hit 1,000 subscribers by July 1st, which is my birthday, and it's also 13 months after I started this YouTube channel. So if you can go below and hit that subscribe button, every subscriber helps. Okay, returning home after being an expat. I have left two expat locations, Argentina and Angola. And I'm gonna be honest with you guys, each time it was really hard. I think I cried on the way to the airport in both cities, and I'm pretty sure I was crying when the plane took off as well. But I did find ways to make my last few weeks in each expat location special. And today I wanna to pass those on to you so you can spend your last few weeks in your expat country fully present and just enjoying every moment of it. The first thing to do before you move back home after living abroad is to take one last trip. Andrew and I, when we lived in Angola, we had always wanted to go on a South African safari. And so when we found out his job was moving to Houston, we definitely booked a safari and we did a quick one down in South Africa. And it was beautiful and we appreciated it so much more because we knew that we wouldn't be coming back to Africa anytime soon. And so we really savored that last trip. So if you've had your eye on going someplace and you just haven't gotten around to doing it yet, then now is the perfect time to do that. You don't want to leave your country with any regrets. And if it's not necessarily a trip, maybe you can take a bus trip out of town to a nearby town that you've always wondered about. Or maybe there's a neighborhood just in your city where you've always wanted to visit, but you just never really had the time. So going on one last regional or city trip is a great way to give yourself a send off. The second thing you should do before you move back home after living abroad is say goodbye to your friends and coworkers. This one is hard, y'all. The people you meet overseas are literally the best people you'll ever meet. And it makes it extra hard because you don't know if you'll ever see them again. Of course, it's easier to stay in touch with social media nowadays, but it's never quite the same. There are so many things that I miss about my friend group in Angola, and it's been over three years now. So before you leave your expat country, be sure you take time to really savor your relationships and friendships that you've made there. When I lived in Angola, I had a huge lunch with all of my girlfriends, and it was definitely a great way to get everyone together at once and say my goodbyes. And I may or may not have shed a few tears on that drive home. And then about a week before we left Angola, Andrew and I had a party at our house with some of our closest friends, and that was so memorable. And it was a great way to have some concentrated hours of fun with just them. And honestly, I doubt we'll ever see them all together in the same room again because they live all over the world and all over the US as well. So bottom line on number two, really leave yourself time at the end to soak up all the friendships that you've made while living overseas. The third thing that you should do before you move home after living abroad is take a photo tour. Now this one's a little different guys, but if you think about it, when you live someplace new, so when I was living in Buenos Aires, the cafes, the restaurants, the street life, the cars, the taxis, it was all just part of daily life. But as soon as you leave your expat country, you might not ever have access to those things again. You may never see the taxis or the buses or the parks or the foods or the cafes. And you'll definitely want to have photos to remind yourself of the time that you spent living in that country. So when I left both Angola and Argentina, I took what I call a photo tour. And it was actually a girlfriend of mine idea in Angola. She said that we should get together and just spend a whole day and just drive around the city and take photos of everything from the ocean to buildings to the grocery stores we went to every day to street life. And so that's exactly what we did. We dedicated an entire day of just taking photos of our surroundings. And I can say over three years later, I am so grateful that we did that. I like seeing our old house. I like seeing my friends that I met there, the grocery stores I shopped at. Some of the street life is amazing that I got to witness. And I'm just so, so grateful that I have those memories today. I didn't know that I was gonna start a YouTube channel three years later, and I'm so glad that I have all those photos and memories from my time in Angola to share with you guys now. Number four on our list is your favorite spots. Do you have a favorite restaurant 
or a favorite street to walk down to or a favorite neighborhood or a favorite library. Go to those places that you've been to so many times before and really absorb and take it in. So if you're listeners of this channel, you probably know that I enjoy jogging. So does Andrew. And a couple of weeks before we left Argentina, we were on a long run and I normally don't like jogging in the city. I don't like a lot of people around. So I would get up super early around 7 a.m., which when you're living in Buenos Aires, that is early, trust me. <laughs> well, this particular day, we went a little bit later around 9.30 or 10, so there were a lot more people out. And for some reason, I think it was probably because I was leaving soon, I really just enjoyed the energy of the city. I could feel the buzz, I could hear the buzz, literally, and it just energized me to actually run faster. And I just remember being on that run and really soaking in the energy and just thinking, gosh, this is so amazing. Like it's making me run faster. And I just really wanted to savor it every minute of that run because I knew it was gonna be one of my last ones. So maybe running's not your thing, but there are so many other ways that you can enjoy your city for a few last weeks. You know, if you have a favorite cafe, go there over and over and just enjoy your favorite things. If you have a favorite street you'd like to walk down, Maybe go to that street and just sit on the sidewalk for an hour and just really take everything in. I also recommend writing a list and on that list, just writing out everything that you want to do with your time left in that country. And then really treat it almost like you're on a vacation where you have one week to do all these things and go do them. You don't want to leave your country with any regrets because remember, you might never come back to this part of the world. You'll probably have more vacation time in the future. Maybe you'll go expat again. You'll live somewhere else but you might wanna spend that time, those future vacations, that future expat life in a new location, learning a new culture. And so you might never come back to this country. So you really wanna do those things that made you love that country over and over at the very end of your time there. The fifth and final thing that you should do as an expat before you return home after living abroad is eat all the food. Guys, this is the best one, eat all the food. Literally, I cannot say it any better than that. Once again, you're gonna to wanna to indulge in all the traditional food your country has to offer before you go back home because you don't know if you're ever gonna go back there again. Before Andrew and I left Argentina, we were sick of Argentine food because we literally ate it nonstop for almost a month. We just inhaled all the medialunas we could, all the alfajores, the dulce de leche, the empanadas, the provoletta, the steak, the seafood, everything that we could get our hands on, we ate. And I don't regret it one bit because we don't know when we'll get back to Argentina. And also be sure to try foods that you haven't tried yet. I'm sure you've seen something in the supermarket that kind of looks a little weird and you're not sure what it would taste like and you've kind of been putting it off. So now is definitely the time that you want to try those foods. And along with foods, you also want to try and take some goodies home with you, back to your home country. So for Andrew and I, that looked like bringing alfajores and dulce de leche. We bought some there in Buenos Aires, a couple packets, <laughs> and we put them in our suitcases and actually two large jars of dulce de leche as well. So whenever we are missing Argentina or whenever we are craving some of those delicious sweets, we have access to them here at our house. It's definitely a great way to prolong your adventure of living in that country. And if you guys are interested in alfajores or dulce de leche, I've talked about them a lot on the channel because I'm a sweet lover and those are the best sweets in Argentina, in my opinion, then definitely head below to the description box and I will give you a link if you're in the US to Amazon store where you can buy some dulce de leche and alfajores and have them delivered straight to your door for less than $20. So it's definitely a good deal if you're curious what it tastes like, or if you do have a sweet tooth, it's definitely something amazing to try. Well, in conclusion, guys, it's never easy leaving your expat country. You have spent so much time learning the culture, adapting to the culture, maybe learning the language, really trying to assimilate. And now, unfortunately, this chapter is over, but a new chapter is coming and it's going to be just as amazing. But before you can move on to your next life chapter, if you implement these five things I've talked about, it will definitely make the leaving process much easier and it'll leave you with some fond memories. All right, guys, that's it for this week. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, or if you learned anything new, please go below and hit that like button and definitely hit that subscribe button so I can reach my goal of 1000 subscribers by July 1st. And if you're interested in dulce de leche and alfajores, then definitely check out that link below.
All right, we'll see you next week, guys. Bye.